Take all of the gold in the world. It will be a cube that's about 67 feet on a side. And you could get a ladder and you could climb up on top of it and you could say, you know, I'm sitting on top of the world. You know, you could fondle it, you could polish it, you could, you could do all these things with it, stare at it, but it isn't going to do anything. If the worst case scenario becomes reality, the economy crashes and there's chaos everywhere, could your bars of gold save you? We'll explore the reasons that people are obsessed with gold. After all, why is this shiny rock the biggest symbol of wealth all over the world? And can gold save you from a doomsday scenario? Watch all the way to the end to get the answers to these questions. Gold has been used as a currency throughout recorded history. It's even been discovered buried alongside human remains in grave sites dating back as far as 4500 BCE. It's safe to say that gold has earned a reputation as the OG investment. Its long and stable history lends to its value as an asset, and most investors consider gold to be one of the safest investments, with prices often tracking in opposition to stock market swings. This makes it a popular choice by many to hedge against rising prices. But is this really a good strategy? The first gold coins are thought to have financed long-distance travel. Around 500 BC, Darius the Great of the Persian Empire minted the Darik, thought to be the first coin. Dariks were used to facilitate the expansion of his empire and the needs of his army as they invaded foreign territories. The use of gold coins as currency caught on, and many countries have used them for centuries. In the US, the Constitution gave Congress the power to coin money. In 1782, the Coinage Act established the US Mint and set the values for coins based on the weight and value of the gold they contained. Other coins containing silver and copper were established too, but this isn't their party. Paper currency was issued by the U.S. government beginning in 1862 in gold and silver certificates. They gave the holder the right to exchange the paper note for the equivalent amount of gold or silver coins. In this system, the amount of money that could be issued was based upon the amount of gold and silver held by the federal government. Private individuals could also hold gold in the form of coins or bullion without restriction until 1933, when President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued an executive order that required all citizens to trade in their gold for Federal Reserve notes. It wasn't until 1974 that U.S. citizens were able to own gold again, thanks to an executive order from President Gerald Ford. But during the Great Depression in the 1930s, industrialized nations stopped using the gold standard, severing the symbiotic link between the value of gold and the value of money. In 1971, President Richard Nixon unilaterally cancelled the direct convertibility of the U.S. dollar to gold, severing the last link between gold and the U.S. monetary system. This action led to the floating system of international exchange rates we still use today, which allows the Federal Reserve to print as much or as little money as it deems appropriate to meet economic conditions. But it also introduced new volatility into our currency. With goods and services sold globally, the floating system makes for chronic inflation and bubbles. Still, gold continues to be a sought-after asset due to its scarcity and history as a reliable commodity. Gold is mostly held in the form of jewelry and artifacts, but its use as an investment continues to grow. According to the International Monetary Fund, the U.S. is the largest owner of gold in the world, with an estimated 8,134 tons. But this is less than 5% of the total global reserves. An estimated 2,500 tons are mined each year and added to the worldwide inventory. There is something iconic about the image of a row of gleaming gold bars. But this is certainly not the only way to invest in gold. Historic and collectors' coins are priced according to weight, purity, and numismatic value. You can also invest in common stock of a gold mining company or a gold exchange traded fund, or EFT which typically does not hold gold as a commodity, but rather tracks its price using a combination of financial derivatives. Gold exchange traded notes, or ETN, are debt securities, and their value fluctuates based on the price of gold. And, okay, gold bars. Gold bars are available by weight of 1 gram, 1 ounce, 10 ounces, and 1 kilo, or 32.15 ounces. The bars generally have near 100% purity. A standard gold ingot, yes, the kind depicted in movies and found in Fort Knox, is 7 inches long, 3 and 5 eighths inches wide, and 1 and 3 quarters inches high, and weighs 27.5 pounds. At current prices, an ingot would have a value of more than $500,000. Investing in gold bars may seem like the safest way to get into this market, 
After all, owning a physical asset adds a sense of security. But should you really hedge the possibility of an economic downturn by buying gold bars? Probably not. Despite its long-standing history, the price of gold is more volatile than most realize, and when you buy will have the largest impact on any future profits. Looking back over the past 25 years, the price of gold has ranged from a low of $347.84 in 2001 to more than $1,900 per ounce in 2011. Today, it's selling for over $2,000 per ounce. In fact, for a range of investment holding periods of 8 years and longer, the NASDAQ index has significantly outperformed gold. There are some other factors to consider when deciding if you should make an investment in gold bullion. First up, gold is an unregulated commodity traded through a network of mostly unregulated dealers. This places any purchase of physical gold at risk for security. In 2012, the New York Post reported that at least 10 fake gold bars were sold to dealers in Manhattan. In the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, Scammers took advantage of the high demand and swindled off-market products, misrepresented rare bullion coins, and overcharging. A quick Google search will reveal hundreds of websites detailing how to make fake gold bars. And new scams are evolving constantly, tricking unwitting investors into everything from paying fake taxes to offering storage vaults for gold bars that don't really exist. And while it's easy to think you can spot a scam from a mile away, more investors than you may expect are taken in by them. A successful scam ring in 2019 snatched between $3 and $5 million from hundreds of investors. Next, let's talk about the safety of principal. Gold has a considerably lower intrinsic value than its market value. According to JP Morgan Asset Management, gold does not have a fundamental intrinsic value. It is not tied to global consumption, doesn't provide cash flow or right to future earnings, and does not guarantee repayment later. Instead, its historic price is driven by scarcity and demand as a hedge against economic disasters or government failures. Since its worth is tied to emotions and anxieties, it becomes very difficult to accurately project future price movements. Another problem with investing in physical gold is liquidity. Buying and selling gold coins and bullion requires dealers, inspections for confirmation of quality, and knowledge of volatile spot prices. Deciding to offload your gold is not an instant process. And the time needed to complete a transaction securely can mean you miss the boat on fast-moving price changes. Investment costs are another downside to owning gold bullion. According to The Street, markups can reach 75% of the spot price of gold depending on form and purity. For example, an American Gold Eagle or Buffalo coin sells for the price of gold the day prior plus 5%. Once purchased, you must also consider the price of security and storage. You don't want to keep your gold bar in a shoebox under the bed. So you'll need to set up a bank safe deposit box or a private security vault or take measures to protect it at home. Okay, so you can see that investing in gold bars or coins comes with some serious risks. But is it still considered a safe hedge against something like market collapse or inflation? Let's get into it. First, let's talk about inflation. Data from Investor Chronicle shows a correlation between gold and inflation of 0.28 from 1971 to 2020. And according to CNBC, the correlation between gold and inflation over the past 50 years has been 0.16. Between 1980 and 2000, the price of gold lost over 40% of its value while the CPI rose nearly 120%. And during historical periods of inflation, gold sometimes underperformed and sometimes outperformed. Looking at both historical and current trends, there is no correlation between the price of gold and CPI. But should you hold physical gold during a market collapse? Gold is seen as a safe place to store money thanks to its long history of being used as currency. Unlike fiat currency, gold can be traded across countries and cultures even in the case of a collapse of a market or a government. But if the US economy were to collapse, how useful would gold coins and bullion really be? What would you realistically do with those bars of gold? The market would not just pivot to precious metals. Think about what people would want. Water, weapons, food, not gold coins. The truth is that if we really faced a collapse of the US dollar, gold would be the last thing on people's minds. And it is possible that your stash of gold could just make you a target for theft. So can gold be a good short-term hedge? Sure. Can it even turn you a pretty profit if you time it right? Absolutely. But is physical gold the best hedge against doomsday-type scenarios? 
Probably not. Invest with caution and enjoy the ride. But don't let hype, misinformation, and aggressive marketing trick you into thinking gold bullion is your ticket to absolute safety. You had a shareholder who asked you a question about gold over the weekend, and your response was pretty in interesting. Berkshire versus gold, you want to talk about how that's performed over the years? If you if you buy an ounce of gold today and you hold it 100 years, 100 years from now, you'll have one ounce of gold, and it won't have done anything for you in between. If you buy 100 acres of farmland, it will produce for you every year. You can use that money to buy more farmland. You can do it, all kinds of things. For a hundred years, it'll produce things for you, and you still have a hundred acres of farmland at the end of the hundred years.